Hi everybody, welcome back again. So we've talked about momentum and how momentum is velocity um, times mass, or mass times velocity, all right? And how impulse is force times time. It's also known as a change in, in momentum. Now we're going to be talking about um, something that we've sort of talked about before in our forces chapters, and that is internal and ex versus external forces. What I mean by that is... Um, we're going to be starting to talk about systems of objects. And in fact, this word system is going to come up a lot as we move forward. If we're talking about the momentum of a system, the total momentum of a system, we have to consider all the parts of the system. Um, now, a system of objects has to involve at least two different objects, right? Two parts. You can have more than two, but you can't have a system of just one thing. Um, so, if... Um, a, if a system of objects has a certain amount of momentum, and that momentum is accounted for for the whole uh, for the whole system, not just one part of it. We're also um, taking into account two different kinds of forces: external forces, that is forces that um, are applied to the system from outside, and internal forces, forces that exist between the two objects. Let me define what I mean by internal forces. Um, I mean kind of like action-reaction pairs. Now let me shrink this down a little bit. And I'll put this up here like that, okay? So we've talked about um, contact force before, right? Let's say we have a surface right here, and we have two boxes that are adjacent to each other on that surface. Maybe they're different sizes, okay? Um... But the box, say this is box one and box two right here. Box two is applying a contact force to box one, and box one is applying a contact force to box two. They're pressed together. There is, if you could put some sort of a force measuring device in between, you would feel a force in between those boxes. But there can be a force between those, those boxes, a contact force. Um, contact force from... Make a little bit bigger. Sorry. Contact force from two to one, and contact force from one to two. Okay, you can have those forces there, but still have the system not move. All right, these are what we call internal forces, forces that exist between two objects. You can do the same thing. Um, another example of, a, of an internal force between objects is tension. Let's say we have these two objects, these two boxes, we'll make them the same thing, and um, so this is box one right here, and this is box two, slightly smaller, right there, and they were connected with a string, all right, or a rope or something like that, I'll make it brown or a different color, okay, that's our string, you can have tension in that string, you can have tension pulling that way, that's tension from um, one to two, all right? And tension exists the other direction as well. This way, tension from two to one. And that tension is behaving as, an, as a contact, or sorry, well, it's doing the same thing as a contact force, but I meant to say it's behaving as an internal force. It's not doing anything to cause a momentum change uh, of the system. It's not an external force um, affecting it from the outside. It's an internal force. So again, you can have these two boxes completely at rest. The whole system would be at rest. Um, and yet have these this tension that exists, th these two pairs of forces, these internal forces exist between the two parts of that system. All right. Um, these forces, contact force here, and tension, and um, any forces that connect uh, two or more objects in a system, if they're internal forces, they don't affect the momentum of the system. Um, they, I, I need to emphasize, of the system itself. If I were to pull these boxes uh, apart harder, so this one here and this one here, I would pull them both apart harder, and there would be greater tension. Would the greater tension between the two boxes do anything to the system? No, they would just sit there, but just have more tension between them. So the internal forces don't do anything to change the momentum, all right? 
they always sum to zero. If this tension is equal to that tension, then this is going to be opposite of that, so they're going to add up to zero. What does change the momentum of the system, however, is external forces. So when we did our chapters on forces, and we're still going to be talking about forces, but when we mentioned net force, we oftentimes wrote it as this right here, sigma f, all right? net force on the system. What we usually meant by that was the net force acting uh, from without on the system, or we really meant the, the net external force. The reason we didn't really talk about internal forces is because it was, the, the assumption was that internal forces add up to zero. You have tension plus negative tension. Well, what's that equal? Of course, that's zero, right? So the internal forces didn't really do anything to, um, to cause the system to move or not. So since those net internal forces are zero, what that means is then that the net force on the system is really going to be whatever the net external force is acting on the system, acting from outside. If forces act between two objects or two or more objects in the system, that's fine. But for the whole system, that will those two forces will not change this whole system's momentum. Only an external force from outside will change the system's momentum. Let's go back to our boxes again, real quick. Okay, we can have box one, kind of trapezoid shaped, and box two sitting right there. So there's one and there's two, and then if there's a force between them. In contact force, that's great. The system will not move. But the system will move if somebody pushes it from outside, right? That's an external force right there. And of course, that whole system is going to move towards the right. That's what's going to cause the system to move, but not internal forces. So, for a system, we can say that the, the net momentum on the system is the net force on the system, or that is the net external force on the system, times the change in time. It's important to note that, the, that, again, if we're talking about the change in momentum of a system, that we have to have an external force acting on it. Which means then, again, I, I think I just said, said this a minute ago, but a, um, if there are forces acting between objects in the system, these, the forces can apply to the opposite object. But that means for the whole system, neither of those forces is going to do anything um, to cause a momentum change. All right, Only a net external force is going to cause a momentum change, is going to cause an impulse. So if there is no net external force, if that is zero, then there's going to be zero momentum change for the whole system, as long as we, we take the whole system into account. All right? The net momentum of the system will be a constant. So, this leads us to what we call the conservation of linear momentum. All right, so that is for objects, at least moving in a straight line, we'll at least initially talk about that in a straight line, linearly, as long as there is no net external force, no external force on the system, the assumption is that there is um, no change in momentum. All right, if initial equals final, then that means a change in momentum equals zero. If there's no net external force, there can be internal forces, but these internal forces cancel out and result in the whole system. The net momentum of the system equals zero if there's no net external force. Okay? Not every part of the system is necessarily going to have the same momentum, but if you take all the parts, the sum of all the objects in the system, you take all those momenta, those momentums, or momenta is plural for momentum, and add them up, they're going to add up to zero if there is no net external force on the system. In the next segment, we're going to do a, um, we're going to do a problem that it look, may look familiar to you because we've done it before in kinematics, but this is going to be using um, linear momentum, and it's going to apply to this. I'll show it to you real quick. It's going to be example 9-4 right here, and you might recall when we talked about 
uh, Newton's third law. Um, force pairs, action reaction forces. We did a problem just like this. We're going to do, do the same thing, but we're going to do it in the context of a momentum. So this whole group of two canoes is a system, and we're going to find um, that the momentum of the whole system is zero. Or we're going to assume that the momentum of the whole system is zero because there's only an internal force, no external force. All right? But I'll stop for right now, and we're going to pick up with this in the ne uh, next segment. So thanks for following along. I'll see you then.